I uh, believe that uh, God has a hand in the asylum uh, ministry, um, that um, everybody's uh, doing their best. Yeah, I never ever thought that, that I would ever be involved in, in a work like this, working with people from around the world and sharing Jesus with them in, in very, very simple ways. We may only see them on a Monday, but um, you get to recognise faces even if we don't know all of the names of them because there's so many to re remember. But um, yeah, it, it's just a way of, of us showing them love and, and getting something in return, friendship of them. And it was just two years ago we were doing a prayer walk around Stockton and a group of uh, new asylum seekers came into Stockton. It was, it was the day that they had arrived uh, and they met us outside of the church and they came round Stockton with us. And of course I got very friendly with one of them. It was just as if I was like his mother. We linked each other round Stockton. I told him a bit of the history of Stockton. And uh, he was already a Christian. But looking round all of them, we can see that God has got him. Well, it's the prophetic work coming to pass. So God has his hand on their lives. And little by little uh, and group by group, they're all coming to know him. But I feel safe near the new family that God gave me and, uh, and I feel here is my home now and if I was a part of this Christian family I wouldn't feel like this. I would have scared because of my situation but they gave me safety, they gave me love, they gave me passionate, they encouraged me. And I learned lots of things, lots of kindness, happiness from them, because they love me, and they show they show everything that they've got in their heart to me, like love, love, like passionate, and I love them because I know that uh, God put them in my way. We have about 50 volunteers who are involved in the drop-in um, and that, that they're all people who are kind of uh, just really enthused and available and um, just enjoying working uh, in, in this particular setting at the minute. It was on a Monday at the mixed drop-in when a lady came in for the first time and I was sat on the welcome desk and I said to her, which country are you from? And she said, Uganda. And I said to her, oh, Uganda's a lovely country. I've been to Uganda five times. And her face just lit up and she said, you've been to Uganda? And I said, yes. And that, was it. that forged a real bond between me and her. Uh, and she's become, she's become a good friend. She's a lovely lady. And just the fact that she knew that I'd been to her country and seen what it was like and that groups from the church, the, the church here, still go out to Uganda to help people in her country was really, really important to her. It's been a real privilege for me to get in particular to get to know one of the young people, the daughters of one of the asylum-seeking families, and hear her story, and seeing how she's come from Iran with no English from a different culture, and seeing her embrace uh, British culture and become um, a Teesider, really. She now speaks English brilliantly with a Teesside accent, and just seeing how things have happened for her and the joy as they were given their you know, right to remain here and the difference it's going to make to her family, but the struggle that's still ahead for them. It's not all clean, you know, sort of plain sailing once that is actually granted, but it's been a real privilege to work with her. I was a primary school teacher for nearly 40 years, teaching literacy skills. I would never have imagined that I would be, at this stage of my life, teaching English to people who speak Farsi or other languages and need to learn English. They have a need, a desperate need, to learn English to adapt into our society. And from the way in which God has moved into my life and given me the opportunity to do this and shown me that we have the, uh, uh, 
this opportunity to, to meet many people and touch many people's lives. We built up a team here of, and helpers, with teachers and helpers, um, of 15, 20 people who all have felt the draw, the, the, the need and the call from God to actually move into this ministry. It has touched all of us because we have met people and who have stories of real deprivation. But the blessing has been to watch them gain the skills through this class, these classes. Not just the skills of English, but to gain confidence in our relationships with them, to be able to move forward in their lives in this area, but also then once reaching status, to move into jobs, to move into other towns, and to gain work. All of this coming from God's prompting, God's touch upon our lives, which we have been blessed beyond measure within this ministry. So during the job club, um, one of the sessions is the interview techniques and one of the members was going for an interview the next day. So we prepared him for certain questions that might arise during the interview process and um, he went away feeling quite confident. So the next day he went for the job and came back next week and said all the questions that we prepared him for, you know, came up in the interview and he was so confident he could answer them with confidence. And later on told us he got the job and we were just so thrilled for him because that was his first job in the UK. It's really hard when somebody who's an asylum seeker with little resources comes up and says, I have a friend who's lost their right to accommodation, they're moving out, and I have to say, I don't know what I can do. So there was a sense amongst us all that we needed to respond to this situation because there were many people in this situation. And quite amazingly and encouragingly, the resource was found to buy a house. And some of our people and some of our asylum seekers uh, were able to put their skills together and their energy, do the house up, make it fit for purpose, so that we could house a couple who were refugees who were able to pay for their uh, rooms and therefore pay the costs of the house as a whole. And we could house three people who were destitute. And it moved on that we hadn't solved a problem, we'd only started a journey. And quite remarkably, our own people were able to give to be able to buy a second house. And we are learning how to engage with people and respond to their need. And our journey is one of faith and experience, the miracles that God places along our journey. I am born in a Muslim family. After that, I saw or I know Jesus when we came in UK. And just, I gave my life to Jesus. I'm very happy about it. And I evangelize many people, invite them to church. And I'm very happy about it because it's a new life for me and my family and just, I think, I born again. What I was surprised about was that someone that uh, you really don't know and then you take him into your church or sometime into uh, your house without even knowing this person to a, to a, to, to a great extent. So it has been... Uh, it, it, I'm amazed by that, but I, I always knew that uh, the church would be welcoming anyway. So. I ended up looking at the legal side of things, which interested me in any case. And what amazed me was how tuned in to spiritual things these Muslims were. 
Uh, some of them were Christians, but a lot of them came from a Muslim background, and we would go into legal situations that really looked up against it, and we would walk out, and the way that they trusted God to see them through this uh, quite honestly put me to shame, because it wasn't my life that was being affected, but they were trusting God, and in many cases they were proved absolutely right. So it's not by chance that God's brought them here. It's, it's, it's part of the journey in their life and they arrive here and God's brought them here and part of the journey, it, it's a miracle that they've survived the journey, that they've come here and, and the difficulties that they've been through, is, it just touches your heart so much, you know, when you listen to the stories of, of what's happened to them and the fact that some of them have almost died on the journey. In fact, some of them have died on the journey. Um, I can tell you stories about, about a man and his two sons and, and only the man and his son arrived here. The other son is lost, is gone. But that's immensely sad stories. But at the end of the day, there's a hope because, because they've come here, they're finding a new life, they're finding a new faith. They're turning away from, from Islam and becoming Christians and they're starting to understand and realise that, that Christians are really cool people, really nice people and that we're a really nice family as well. You know, the Christian church is not just a church but it totally, totally blows them away, the fact that we are a family, that we pray together, that we love together, that we cry together, that we care together. These things are important and they're, they're, they value these at this time in their life when they're estranged from their own families in a strange land, you know. Well, my attitude is that many of the people we're working with come from an, an Islamic background. How do they see that God loves them unless they see it in the way we treat them and meet their needs. Their fundamental need is to learn to speak English. They're coming to a Christian church where they're seeing Christians who care for them and the way I care for them is to try to teach them English. And I'm unorthodox in the way I do it. Sometimes we're a bit noisy. Um, no, often we're a bit noisy but it's hugely fun and they leave knowing that they've had a good time. I've had a good time and they know they're safe, they know they're cared for and from that we can go on and invite them to things like Alpha or they can come along into the church. I've spoken to a Muslim lad who's since become a Christian who said when he came into the church he was frightened because he knew what would happen if a Christian went into a mosque. And the first thing that happened was someone went and sat next to him and started talking. So we need to show these people that they're loved, cared for in practical ways, and their great need is to learn English.